So today I want to share with you guys why if Warren Buffett bought Tesla stock, I'm talking by five, ten billion dollars worth of Tesla stock, I want to share with you why that could be one of the smartest investment decisions Warren Buffett has ever made in his investing life. And that is saying a lot because this is the Oracle of Omaha we are talking about, all right? And here's the best part, whether Warren Buffett made money or lost money on the position, it would still be one of the smartest investments he ever made. That's why we're gonna get into this video. Now first, I just wanna dispel a couple uh, very popular things that some people might say, okay? They might say, Tesla's balance sheet, that's not good enough, silly Jeremy. No way Warren Buffett's gonna buy Tesla with their balance sheet. Well, if you saw yesterday's video, which is, Kraft Heinz is one of Warren Buffett's biggest investments. I think it's around his sixth biggest investment, right? In that video, we went ahead and we looked at Kraft Heinz balance sheet, and it's arguably one of the worst I've ever seen in my life. We're talking about a company that's got about $1.3 billion in cash, but there's a company that has around $31 billion in long-term debt. That is absolutely incredible, guys. $31 billion in long-term debt and $1.3 billion in cash. One of the worst I've ever seen. It makes Tesla look like they got a pristine balance sheet, honestly, okay? Tesla right now has about $3.6, $3.7 billion in cash on their balance sheet, and they have about $8.4 billion in long-term debt. And here's the best part. Tesla just became profitable very recently within the past few quarters. So as Tesla grows over time and should become more and more profitable, guess what? That balance sheet should strengthen up more and more as time goes on down the road, all right? Now, some people might also try to say, well, Tesla's probably too volatile of a stock for Warren Buffett to buy. Well, let's think about it. The Kraft Heinz company, one of his biggest investments, just fell 27% yesterday, okay? That makes even Tesla look like it's not that volatile. If we look at Warren Buffett's biggest investment in the entire stock market right now, it's Apple stock, right? Look at Apple stock. This is just looking at a one-year chart of Apple stock. You're going to see a stock that's been anywhere in the $140 range to $230 plus, and you're going to see Apple stock has just moved up and down big throughout the course of the year. You can even look at something like a Wells Fargo, one of Warren Buffett's other biggest investments. Wells Fargo's, for instance, has been a very volatile stock. This is, once again, just looking at a one-year chart, and look at how volatile a stock like Wells Fargo has been. So I think the notion that, oh, Warren Buffett might not want to buy Tesla stock because it doesn't have a good enough balance sheet. No, he's bought plenty of stocks that have way worse balance sheets than Tesla. Second, it, oh, it might be too volatile. Absolutely not. You look at a lot of Warren Buffett stocks, they're very volatile. By the way, volatility for an investor such as Warren Buffett, a value investor, it's absolutely a great thing because you love it as a value investor when your shares can dip huge, right? Because you get to buy for very, very cheap, all right? So that's just a good thing. Now, if you're not familiar with Warren Buffett's company that he owns or he owns part of, right? He's got his, almost all his wealth in this company named Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire Hathaway basically has two business segments, all right? On one side, you have Berkshire that owns pretty much 100% of those businesses, and they get all the profits, and they can do whatever they want with that money, all right? And then you got the other side, which is percentage-owned companies, so companies they might own 5% of, or 10% of, or 20% of, and that's kind of what I suggest they do with Tesla. They buy a percentage of Tesla. They maybe buy $5 billion worth of Tesla stock, or $10 billion, and they buy a percentage of Tesla stock, all right? And basically those percentage-owned companies that can make money two ways. One is through dividend income. Most of his companies he owns stocks in, right? Paid him out dividends. And two, if they go to sell someday, hopefully they can sell for a much steeper price than what they paid when they went ahead and bought it. That's Berkshire's business. They got the 100% owned businesses and then they got their partial owned businesses, all right? Now, let's start getting into this. So Warren Buffett's main cash cow business is Geico. By far and away, Geico is their main cash business business, which is honestly an insurance company at the end of the day. A lot of you guys probably have Geico for your insurance out there. Geico is a company that does somewhere between 25 and $27 billion worth of revenue. And imagine the type of profits that Geico produces each and every quarter that Warren Buffett basically can just go ahead and invest that money, right? This is his cash cow business. And if we think about Tesla, if we think about Tesla, we don't just think about, oh, there, there are electric vehicles, but we're thinking autonomous driving and how much that technology is going to change the game over the next three to seven years and how most Tesla cars over the next few years will start to become fully autonomous. We're talking level four, level five autonomy within just a few years. And this is going to be a very bad thing for Geico's business overall. Geico, Geico gets a ton of their business from car insurance, okay? And Warren Buffett has specifically cited this before, that self-driving cars will be a negative to auto insurance companies. He explained that in an interview over a year ago. And so you're looking at one of Berkshire's cash 
cash cow businesses being hurt substantially by autonomous driving because basically once we get all, all autonomous fleets, the amount of accidents that are going to happen is going to be substantially less. Basically, once most cars out there are autonomous, the amount of accidents that happen are going to go down substantially. When you have the amount of accidents go down substantially, guess what? Geico is not going to be able to charge nearly the premiums as they used to charge back in the day, as in right now, which means Geico is going to become less and less of a cash cow business in the future. And that is a bad, bad thing for Berkshire and their business model overall, okay? That's not it. They also own a railway, Burlington Northern Santa Fe. Warren Buffett bought this business quite a few years ago. It's a business that brings in around $20 billion a year in revenue. As we've seen with the Tesla Semi, these semis can become fully autonomous in the future, meaning they probably won't even need drivers. And they've even talked about things like the capability to convoy. Tesla founder Elon Musk revealed at the Tesla Semi unveil that the truck can work in convey mode with a three truck convey beating not only traditional diesel trucks, but also rail transport in terms of cost per mile price. It can do 85 cents per mile with diesel only able to do around $1.25 at today's gas prices. And you can think about it this way. Imagine the improvements Tesla and Elon Musk are gonna make in the future as far as this convoy mode and imagine how much of a cost advantage maybe this can be in a five year span or a 10 year span versus railroads. And so this is kind of a little further outplay, but if you're looking at you know five years out or 10 years out, this is a big competitive threat to all rail companies. Now Hyperchange did a great video recently about the stagnant nation fallacy, which basically goes into the fact that sometimes people think like uh, things are just going to stay the same and there won't be major improvements. If you look at an industry like the real industry, there hasn't been any major improvements in decades and decades, and there aren't going to be in the real industry. However, in autonomous driving, battery technology, there's mass improvements going on. Tesla's changing the game as far as that goes. They're pushing things so much faster than anybody expected that there's no such thing as a stagnation fallacy with Tesla because they're just going to get the cost down more and more and more. And if you're talking about 85 cents a mile, imagine what the cost advantage can be in three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. The real players are gonna be at a real risk of having their businesses hurt quite a bit by things like the convoy mode, okay? Then you look at Lubrizol, which is another huge company that Berkshire owns. This company throws off billions upon billions of dollars each year, around 6.5 to $7 billion per year. This company is a specialty chemicals company for the transportation, industrial, and consumer markets. These products include additives for engine oils and other transportation related fluids, additives for industrial lubricants, and additives for gasoline and diesel fuel. Gasoline and diesel fuel will likely become less and less relevant as the years go on as we can get electric semis out there and then as more and more folks start getting electric cars, it's gonna make oils and gasolines less and less relevant as time goes on. So you got another major business that is at a real risk of being impacted in a very negative way because of Tesla and the whole electric wave. You even look at a company like they bought a big ownership stake in Pilot Flying J. Pilot Flying J, they get the majority, by far and away, the majority of their revenues from diesel fuel and from people basically gassing up their cars. So Warren Buffett has all these major, major investments and these major companies he owns that basically produce some, all this cash, right? And these companies are really in the crosshairs of, of Tesla, either directly or indirectly, and how they're gonna th be threatened by Tesla over time. And this is why it makes sense for Warren Buffett, in my opinion, to just go out there and buy five or $10 billion worth of Tesla stock, okay? The reason is, it's hedging a position at the end of the day, which means you're gonna basically offset some of your potential losses or some of your potential gains out there. We have many of Warren Buffett's businesses potentially being hurt a lot over the next five to 10 years, basically directly or indirectly because of Tesla and the way they're changing the game. So Warren Buffett can just like cross his fingers and say, I hope they don't make it or something like that. And maybe they fail and electric cars fail and this whole change never happens, right? But guess what? Every single day that goes by is becoming more and more of a reality that this is happening and this is the way the world's going and ICE vehicles are the thing of the past and electric vehicles are the now and the future. And so Warren Buffett's in a position where he could buy a five or $10 billion position in a stock like Tesla, right? Get that position built and then, okay, let's say Tesla succeeds and 
you, you know, the stock goes up to thousands of dollars in the future, you know, mass amounts of electric cars are out there in the future, you know, by, you know, let's say five or 10 years from now, uh, pretty much everybody's buying an electric car, whether it be a Tesla or some other kind, the solar business becomes a big business and things like that, right? Great, he makes a ton of money on those Tesla shares, but guess what? His other businesses will be hurt, and so he's gonna lose some profits, but he's hedged his position. However, let's say Tesla does succeed and he's got no position, well then he's stuck in a position where he doesn't get the upside with Tesla stock, and number two, all those businesses are hurt. Now let's say on the flip side, he buys five or $10 billion of Tesla stock, and let's say Tesla somehow just fails, which I don't think Tesla can fail at this point in time. I think they're starting to get to be uh, yeah, at a level where they're too big. Also, Warren Buffett could go ahead and pump money into them if he really wanted to. If he had a direct investment and he wanted that investment to succeed, he gets, he's got plenty of money. They got a hundred plus billion. He could you know, loan it out to Tesla and get them through whatever they need to get through, right? But let's say whatever reason, Tesla fails. Elon Musk fails, Tesla fails, right? Okay, he loses five or $10 billion, but guess what? Those other companies, oh, they're, they're gonna do great in the future because obviously the electric wave would die down in a major, major way. So it'd be a very intelligent hedge on Warren Buffett's part to say, hey, you know what? Tesla's gonna indirectly or directly affect a ton of my companies very negatively. Let me go ahead and buy a position in it or no, let me not buy a position in it and let's just <laughs> watch it happen and hope for the best, right? That's a tough position. So I think it would be a very, very intelligent move by Warren Buffett. I know he's not gonna love the valuation on Tesla and that's fine. At the end of the day, it's not really about making so much money for him. It's just about hedging that position in case Tesla really becomes the big bad beast in the future, okay? I hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.